Let's look at how cue ball and object ball weight differences affect pool shots. The most common situation where there can be a significant weight difference is on coin operated bar box tables where the cue ball is sometimes heavier and larger so it can be distinguished from the object balls in the ball return mechanism. However, weight differences can also occur with old and worn balls. Generally, with an originally equal weight set, the cue ball will tend to be slightly smaller and lighter because it takes more abuse and wears faster as a result. On the other hand, if a new cue ball is used with an older set, the cue ball will generally be slightly heavier. To exaggerate the weight difference effects in this video, we are using combinations of pool and carom balls, which have noticeably different weight and size. With equal weight balls, a square hit stun shot with no top or bottom spin results in a stop shot, where the cue ball stops dead in place. A heavier cue ball drives forward with stun. A stop shot with a heavier cue ball actually requires a slight amount of bottom spin. The bottom spin creates drag action, which slows the forward motion. A heavier cue ball with top spin follows the object ball even more than normal. The extra weight pushes the cue ball forward naturally and then the top spin accelerates it even more. It takes more effort to draw a heavier cue ball. Some of the backspin is lost to slow the cue ball's natural forward motion. This leaves less spin to accelerate the cue ball backwards. A lighter cue ball with stun bounces back from the object ball. To hit a stop shot with a lighter cue ball, you actually need a slight amount of top spin. Notice how the balls hop after the collision. This is due to the size difference between the two balls. Anytime balls hit off of their equators, they will bounce. Also notice how the top spin slows the cue ball to a stop after impact. A follow shot will not respond as well with a light cue ball. Some of the top spin is lost as the natural backward motion is slowed. This leaves less spin to generate forward speed after the hit. A draw shot is very easy with a light cue ball. The cue ball bounces back naturally and the spin adds to the draw speed. With a cut angle, a stun shot results in the cue ball heading straight down the tangent line, which is perpendicular to the object ball's motion. This is the famous 90 degree rule. It applies only for balls of equal weight. Again, the cue ball heads straight down the tangent line. Also notice that the cue ball picks up a small amount of side spin due to the collision with the object ball. With a stun shot, the cue ball heads straight down the tangent line regardless of the speed. With a slow roll follow shot, the cue ball curves forward of the tangent line almost immediately. With faster speed, the cue ball persists along the tangent line longer before curving forward. With bottom spin, the cue ball draws back from the tangent line. And again, more speed delays the curve. A heavy cue ball with stun goes forward of the tangent line.
a heavy cue ball with topspin follows forward sooner and more than normal. A heavy cue ball with backspin goes forward of the tangent line before drawing back. And again, the curve is delayed with faster speed. A light cue ball with stun deflects back from the tangent line. A lighter cue ball with topspin does not follow forward as much as normal. Again, this is because the lighter cue ball naturally deflects backward before curving forward. It's much easier to draw a lighter cue ball. The lighter cue ball bounces back naturally and the bottom spin makes it draw even more. With equal weight balls, a rolling cue ball deflects at a natural angle close to 30 degrees over a wide range of cut angles. This is the basis for the 30 degree rule. This rule applies even for heavier carom balls, provided the weights are equal. A heavier cue ball will go forward of the natural angle direction. And a lighter cue ball will deflect more than normal. As we saw earlier, when the cue ball and object ball are of different size, the balls tend to hop after impact. Another issue related to size differences is rack tightness. New balls will be uniform in size and very spherical. When this is the case, the balls can be racked tightly with all balls touching. This will result in good object ball motion with a square hit on the break. However, as balls wear, size and roundness differences can occur over time. This can make it very difficult to achieve a uniformly tight rack. Here we're exaggerating the effect with a large ball in the center of the rack. All of the balls in the first three rows are touching, but there's a large gap in the fourth row. Obviously, the situation wouldn't be this bad with a typical set of balls, but even a small gap in certain places can have a significant effect on brake performance.